Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing good. Today in this video we are going to revise the letter pattern that is the informal letter pattern. So as you all know that the informal letter starts from the left side of your page and first of all you write the exam with the capital initials and then you write a comma. After that you write a city then you do not mention the name of your city you just write a.b.c and all these three letters will be capital. Then you write the date of the uh, letter you are writing on. The day pattern is as followed that first you write the month then you write the day and after that you put a comma and write the year and full stop. Then in the next line you write uh, my dear and you mention the name of the person or the relation of the person to whom you are writing a letter. After that you write the uh, body of the letter the detail and in the end you write yours sincerely or yours affectionately or yours truly whatsoever you want to write and you put a comma after that and you write xyz instead of your name at the right side of your page in the bottom so this is the pattern of informal letter you need to write the letter on a consolation a letter to your friend to console him or her on mother's death and this is the body of the letter after that uh, after that we have read the poem the field mouse by gillian clark that is a welsh poet now uh, in this poem uh, it's a simple uh, scenario of a field and there is a hay cutting uh, time and the family and the people are cutting the hay and the grass in the fields but they found the uh, dead body of a little mouse during hay cutting as this poem was uh, written during the war time of bosnia so this killing of uh, this little mouse could symbolize the people of europe attacking each other and killing each other in the first stanza the poet uh, the poet has heard on the radio the terrible news about the war in which europeans are killing each other as she and her family get on the work um, in the field, the suffering of those involved in the war is on her mind. Now, uh, talking about the second stanza. In the second stanza, the poet's little boy brings to her a badly injured mouse which he has found in the cut grass. The children kneel down and stare at its little body. This is what happens literally in this stanza, but throughout the poem, the literal events are making her and the reader think about the civil war in Bosnia and the killing going on there. Then uh, talking about the third stanza, in this final stanza the hay cutting is finished and it is evening and uh, finally the night time. The poet cannot stop thinking about the war reports she had heard on the radio in the morning and uh, she cannot bear to read the newspaper accounts. Her sleep that night is disturbed by nightmares where her own children dancing in the grass become Bosnian children, thin bond and vulnerable to the gunfire overhead, and her neighborhood becomes an enemy throwing stones at her property. So this is how uh, her neighbor starts wounding her. This was what happening in this poem. Uh, literally, it, it shows the uh, uh, time of a field and uh, the killing of a mouse. But uh, if we look at the other side, it shows the killing of and the war time of the Bosnian people and the European people attacking each other. Then there comes uh, the word, difficult words and their meanings. Um, we have done in this unit. We have already made the sentences of these words. Some of these words are hums that uh, means to make a low continuous sound then meadow a field where grass or hay grow then terrible um, it means horrible hedge a barrier drifting moving quivering means shaking sparks shines agony a state of pain dusk the time of sunset in inhabited then it means lived in rumor of false news heal recover brittle easily breakable stammering uh, shaking or pausing of voice um, it's a disorder then wounding means hurting you need to um, make sentences of these words you need to make your own sentences and uh, you might have done them next we have the grammar skills unit number four the question words so what are the question words the words that are used to uh, show that we are asking a question or the words that are used at the start of a sentence to make it a question they are called as the question words some of these questions what when where which who whom 
tools and why they, they are also called as wh words or wh family these uh, words are used to um, show that the statement is a question for example what are you doing who told you that you can also use what which and whose before a noun so uh, which picture do you prefer that is an example of these question words next um, the question words how when where and why are used before the adverbs to show that how something was done and in which manner something was done for example how much will it cost then uh, there comes another uh, word do and does this these words are also used to make the sentence interrogative as you are in, interrogating about a uh, about something you're asking something so um, and there is another thing that the subject and verb in a, a question are usually inverted it means that the subject comes after the verb instead of before it for example where is she here the subject she comes after the verb is now for the verbs that are in simple present and simple past you use the helping verb do in questions in the past tense you use the uh, did in simple present tenses uh, you use do for the plural noun and you use does for the singular noun but in the past tense you use did for both of them for example how does this machine work and what did he say for the verbs that already have a helping verb or a modal verb you put the uh, subject after the first part of the verb for example why should i apologize when will the car be repaired you do not invert the subject in verb if the question word is the subject for example who ate all the cookies what animal has a long trunk then there is this exercise uh, you have done